Hello and welcome back to Norfolk Fords. Today I thought I'd finally take the time to address the telehandler issue we've had recently this year. So we have always had JCB as long as I've been about on the farm since I was a little boy we've always had JCB. We like to back British, they're a good brand but after three JCBs we finally said this is enough and for those of you who have already seen the channel we had quite a few demos to try and find the wheat from the chaff and I think we have so uh, hello it's no surprise it's the Merlot so on demo from Cranworth Farm Services we had a 35.7 we've gone for the 33.7 and it's a little bit availability reasons why. Um, simply, Tim and his guys had one of these available sooner than if we wanted the 35. So we went for the 33 on that reason. We also liked that it was slightly narrower. So we have a great deal of peonies down the bottom of our farm and they're in set rows at six to four inches. And these wheels, oh well, this size tail handler just sits within that a little bit better. If you go for the 35, you're minutely that little bit wider on the tyres. I'm sure if you've really requested it, we could have had, you know, rims swapped about and that could have been a bit narrower. But for stock, simple machines without too much fuss, the 33 Turbo Farmer was what we were looking for. So we've actually had this a month now and we're all fairly happy with it. There's one or two things I'd like to cover and say, hmm, not so fussed on, but overall, I want to say, well done Merlo, you are, you should be leading the telehandler market as we sit right now, because you've got a very strong competitor to any brand, any of the top tier brands, and you're cheaper than them. Anybody who runs the higher end brands, you know what I mean, please consider a Merlot the next time you come for a nil because I am really impressed and the rest of the family is. This is a very remarkable machine. So let's go into a little bit more and see what we have. So a lot of what I'm going to be poking about with is already fairly well covered in the Owen Smith reviews that we've been doing with my mate Owen. He was very fond of the 35.7 that we had on demo and he even said, you've got to look at these machines because uh, yeah, you've got, you've got to realize that in sort of UK farming, Merlot are seen as a cheaper telehandler, but this new frame that they've designed, um, I think it's been about a few years now, this frame is becoming quite familiar with those who look at Merlot. This is what I believe a telehandler should be. So they say in the brochures, this is the widest cab on the market. And uh, you look from the front, it is a fairly wide cab. When you sat in it, it's a very comfortable cab. I wouldn't really say, while you're in here, wideness is really a factor. But actually, you've got no end of leg room, got all the pedals you want. Actually, I've had a good couple of hours in here now, and I've never really cramped up. You know, I have got oodles of space, and a lot of that is more to do with the leg room. You know, you've actually got a sizeable footwell in here where you can stretch you can move it's as it should be the joystick I said this um, in the class review the buttons are exactly as I would want them forward and backwards is on the back here I hardly reach for anything the only thing you reach for is the neutral but even then that falls quite nicely with this standard grip that I have right now so that has had the time spent on it to get a very ergonomic design but I don't like the armrest as much it's comfortable and it holds my arm at the right position but it's sort of a rubbery sort of foam material and I'll be honest if you sat on it for long enough you start to sort of rub up against it and um, it's just a little bit sticky on your arm if that makes sense but this is me being fussy you know, I don't think that badly of that, but this is, this I hope highlights how good of a machine this is, that I'm having to say, oh I don't like that bit. And it's as simple as the armrest being a funny material. 
I just think the sort of rubbery texture, if you're on it for long enough, just rubbing your arms sort of as you're moving about. You, I, I wouldn't say you get carpet burn, but you start to notice that you've been rubbing along it all day. I think that, that does show that this is a very well-designed telehandler with a lot of things considered if I'm complaining about the armrest. But everything else, um, I have towed trailers with this now and um, I like the way the pickup hitch works. It's very easy. If we start her up, it starts very quickly. All I need, turn the fan off for a sec. Aircon's there, nice and easy as well. All I have to do is operate this switch here. And if you look in the mirror, I don't know how well this is showing the camera, you can see the hook very clearly. And then all you do is pull the lever here and then let it down. That's a very easy pickup hitch to use. I've had no problem backing up to it. The mirror is mounted perfectly. So that I'm very fond of. It's not often we tow with it, but it's just nice. As you can see, um, 37 hours is uh, not a great deal of hours, but you know, we've put all them on now in the month we've had it, and we all like the machine. It's very good. One thing that um, <laughs> Dad and Washi aren't fussed on is you'll turn on the window wipers. I've pressed the wrong side of that. I pressed the skirt by accident. Right. Turn on the regular window wiper, and it's a push button. And uh, without being shown, you just keep pressing the button, and all it does is cycle to quickness. To turn it off, you have to hold it until you hear the double beat. As long as you know that, it's not a problem. But I'm saying that is more of a, that's annoying for my dad sort of thing. So that's annoying for my dad. But this is great how this works. So first off you've got the joystick which comes on with touch sensitivity. That's very good. I can be stood outside the cab lean over and know that I'm operating this safely because I can. it sees that I'm holding the joystick. Won't let you drive though because it's still got a sensor in the seat. It's very sensitive about the park brake being on. If I now put this into gear it's very quick to um, beep at me that I've got it on. Um, that's probably something that I would say is a little bit funny. So I'm out of park, I'm in neutral, but I get out of the cab and it beeps at you like Billio. Being as that's an electric handbrake, I would argue why doesn't that come on automatically like a lot of the tractors do when they have automatic handbrakes and stuff. So just a few little things, but I'm being completely fussy. I mean, let's go back 20 years, you'd still be pulling the lever here to put your handbrake on. You know, I'm being completely fussy about this, but I love this machine. I have enjoyed all the time I've spent in this machine. It's very good at what it does. It has oodles of power for pushing. As you can see, it daily pushes up our wood chip, and uh, you, you just do it in five minutes. Even with a big pile, you know, the lorry fills this shed when it dumps. Literally, all you do, you hit the diff with your foot. I thought that would be quite flimsy when we had the demo, thinking that button wouldn't last too long. That is a very good button. You push it, you know, gently push it with your foot. Diff is on, and this, even without the diff, has just got oodles of power to push through and just send a load up. I've got my combining done now as well and uh, pushing up grain with this was, was a joy as well. That bucket is um, I believe the multi-purpose bucket, it's not a grain bucket as such but it's bigger than what we had on the JCB but it's, it's just the size comparison really compared to the machine. Our JCB bucket looked huge because we had a small JCB. We are now in a bigger telehandler and we're very happy for it. This bucket is, is very good. It's done a little bit of levelling in the field. It's um, done a lot of pushing up work. And it's a very well built bucket, you know. There's not really much to be said. I like the data tag thing that the buckets have. So that the telehandler knows that the bucket attached is only rated for X, Y and Z on the plate. 
it's all very clever little bits and pieces like that that I like. I quite like the headstock as well. I wasn't sure if it was the right kind of headstock being as it's quite sort of narrow here and you're effectively hooking on here and your pin latch is in there as you can see sort of here and here. I weren't really sure if that was a stable headstock compared to say the JCB quick hitch which is quite a, a big and bulky headstock which takes up a lot of room but I actually think this is quite good. When that pin is latched in it's a very secure hold on the bucket. It's a very tight fit. So it's not just hooking on here, it's also pushing on the back plate there. So it's actually very well latched in and I feel very secure using the, the tools. I mean, we ha have a muck grab on this as well. And again, the same thing. When that's on, this machine is very good. It's, the, the, the equipment is very, being that it's, it's the genuine Merlot bucket and the genuine Merlot grab, it's very well built to go with this machine, as you would expect it to. My only criticism of the headstock is I struggle sometimes even with a screwdriver to dig stuff out from here because that, that's just a nice little wedge bit. I asked him if people make a little flap or something to cover up there and um, he said he's never seen anybody do it and it's not really needed but that does clear eventually if you spend the time to flick it out but it's not that bad because I worried that you'd get wood chips stuck in here and that would break this nipple off but so far you know touch wood we've not had any problem there. There's a bit of chip collect around here and in this joint as well but so far we've not damaged the ram we've had a good bit of paint off would be my criticism I would say that the, the paint work is probably thinner than it should be in certain spots on the headstock I mean I can't excuse here because this is where the forks and the buckets and that go but you know like here that's been taken off by wood chip and I I've done a bit of painting in the past I wouldn't have said that's taken overly well there but that's just me being fussy again overall I love the headstock, I think it's a very secure headstock if you are thinking of going Merlot, consider using the proper Merlot headstock. The hydraulic fittings, um, I'm not really sure what I think of this, because I quite like how you unscrew it and clip it on, and the only thing I've actually had to modify is my bail grab. So I've only actually had to get one of those fittings but they're not really that available, but they are, but you know, it's not just an off the shelf thing. Not really sure what to make of that, but I like the system for when you want to unlatch, you have to have this pipe connected. This is your unlatch system. And for when you have a grab on, you disconnect that entirely. So you're never going to drop your grab off while the pipes are connected. It's a very, it seems a little bit like taking an extra step where you could just have that on a separate circuit. But I would argue that's a very good safety feature for, you know, you don't want to drop your muck grab off and rip your pipes off, you know, because you'd no doubt do some damage up here. So I quite like that. I've had nothing to do with these electrical connectors. We haven't got anything that fit them. So for them, I would say I'd rather they were a bit more covered up maybe, possibly a bit more guarding here. But so far I've not had a problem. I've not had any reason to really worry while pushing up that I might knock them. So there's nothing really to talk about. The work lights, very good. These are the LED package. The boom lights are halogen though. And um, I've not done much night work with it, but the work I have done, it's been very clear. It hasn't been over bright. Well, that sounds tough. It's been very bright to work in, but it hasn't been glaring. That's the better way of putting it. So I like the lights, the lights are good. Criticism of lights though, that should be higher up really. I mean, take the class that we had on demo as well. Um, that had lights mounted up here, which could always see over the bucket. So even when you're at the lowest with this bucket, so you're not scraping on the floor, these lights aren't really shown. And before you say it, I know you're not meant to run implements down the road because you're meant to have the headstock clear just in case you have a crash, but let's be realistic. If you've got a bucket on, most people are taking a bucket down the road. Class have taken the headlights and put them higher. I would say, yeah, 
not a big thing because we don't do that much road work anyway. This machine's ultimately going to live its life on our yard, pushing up wood chips, loading lorries, and uh, doing a little bit of field leveling. But we don't travel with it at all. So, again, a mini moan, but not that fussed. Like I said, I really enjoy using this machine. I think it's a very good machine. The value for money is definitely up there. It's cheaper than your top level competitors such as JCB. Um, Tim and his guys at Cranworth Farm Services have been very attentive, very good with us, um, very helpful. And every time I've rung him up, if he hasn't answered straight away, I, I know I've got him within half an hour. Not had any problems with it, just been like a few like, oh, how do we do this? But really grateful for the guys over there for doing that. So, that's another thing. I quite like this door being pinned back, just the whole door. Because for me, I do a lot more sort of workshop things where you just sort of half lifting things about. So being able to sort of reach in the cabin, use the controls, of course, it's got palm recognition, so it's all quite safe to do so. It's quite easy because you're in and out of the cab, the door's out of the way, it's safe, it's not going to hit the wheel. I just like that, I think that works. But we come around the back, you know, it's all very well built. You can, I love the stance this has got. Compared to the 35, I'd say this is a little bit chonkier looking on the back end, but it might be just because them wheels are nipped in a bit more. So, I love the look of the machine. Oh, that's another thing. The beacon falls down. So this is a little bit taller than our JCB, which was a specialist lowered cab. But you fold the beacon down, this can just about go in most of the places the JCB had to. So that's really good. That's keeping it useful. I like that the ram stops up here out of the way as well. So you know where it is and it's not in a silly location. Um, yeah. The visibility from that exhaust, as previously mentioned in Owen's video, you don't actually, that isn't in the way. That's perfectly positioned. I would say though, and this is, this is probably more a critique of telehandlers, whenever you've got the boom slightly up, those mirrors instantly disappear and you can't see down this side. So possibly a little bit higher up would have been nice, but I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. I know when you drive these, you've got to be quite aware of your surroundings so it's just about taking your time really but I'd say the build quality is fantastic I feel like this is a very sturdy beast you come in the engine bay and um, it's all neat and tidy you know I've only had 37 hours on it but it's still tidy got a little bit of wood chip starting to build up in the bottom here but we can blow that out it's got lots of holes at the bottom so you can actually get the rubbish out of here the JCB was terrible because it had no end of heavy plates and stuff, so you could never really get under and clean it out and stuff like that. But this just seems to work for us. And this is where I've got sort of a, a backhanded compliment. The fan's not as powerful as I'd like it to be when you put it in reverse. When you've got a little bit of stuff on the grill, it doesn't blast it off as I would hope to see it. You know, compared to the JCB, I would say it's weaker. The fan's just not, in my mind, as powerful. But it's far better than a more powerful fan because it has got a screen protecting the radiator. And we haven't actually cleaned this screen yet. So with a weaker fan, I would say, and this screen in place, it's, it's actually better. I mean, look at that. That's the rubbish that's collected. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. I'm quite happy with that. You know, take that off of wing nuts, give it a shake out. It's not a problem. Nothing has really gotten through. Nothing is that there. I can see a little tiny one there, and that slipped through. But there's nothing in the fins yet. I think that's brilliant. You know, ask me again in a year's time if I think this radiator's better. I will honestly say the fan's weaker, but having that guard in place here probably is better than having a more powerful fan because it's not in the fins not yet anyway so I am very happy with the machine I think it is a very good machine everything's easy to understand on it everything's well everything apart from the window wipers because dad doesn't like that 
but everything is very safe to use on it. It's never put itself in a muddle. I've only used the override once because I boomed out too far with a heavy bucket and uh, the, the wheel, the, you know, you never felt the weight transfer as such. It stopped itself before it even got into a slightly precarious system as it should do with those white, um, white monitors. For me, the system just works. This is a very good machine. I'm very pleased that we went with this. And uh, as a farm, it was quite a proud moment getting something completely different onto our yard. And um, yeah, it has done exactly what it has promised to. It hasn't let us down anywhere yet. I look forward to it serving a long life on our fleet. And, and I would say this again and again and again, if you are thinking of changing your telehandler, please consider trying a Merlot. I'm not endorsed by Merlot or anything like that, but I cannot express how impressed I am with the machine, especially when they are cheaper than the top level competitors. This is a very good machine. The bigger machines out there as well, in exactly the same cab, exactly the same layout. So if you had, you know, small, medium, large, as some farmers might well do, you're gonna know the product inside and out because they're not gonna be that much different. They're just gonna be a bit bigger. So what can I say? I really rate it. I'm very pleased we've got one. I look forward to, I, well, I look forward to using it. That's the thing. How many of you can say you look forward to using your telehandler? How comfortable, how easy is it for you to say that you look forward to driving it? This is a very good machine, it's very comfortable. I'm very happy with it. So on that note, thank you very much for watching. I hope the demos were worth it to you guys, but we found the machine that works for us. So if you like what we do here, make sure you like and subscribe, and stick around for more. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you and bye bye. I will just say before we end the video though, I can't sing Merlot's praises fully. I'm very pleased with the product I have here. There is one product I'm afraid I can't like. Next week's video is a Owen Smith review of the e-worker. So make sure you stick around for that one. It's not a bad machine, but I think you should stick around to see what we have to say next week. So, 